Welcome to Tea Time, spiritual conversations for, with, and about women. I'm your host, Tawana Henderson, and I want to remind you to take a moment and like this podcast and share it with friends and other women in your life. Well, I'm excited about today's podcast because I wanted to take time to share with you on a specific topic that I recently preached on at my local church. Now, today's topic isn't one that we necessarily lean into a lot, but I definitely believe it merits giving attention to. And the topic um, surrounds the end times. So pull up a chair and let's chat a bit about this. Now, let me say right off that I'm not an expert on eschatology, nor am I a Bible scholar. I really wanted to have a conversation about what Scripture says and what we need to know and, and do as a result of Scripture. Now, here's the thing. Uh, many times you think about people being at two polar opposites when it comes to the whole idea of the end times. You have those who sort of shy away from the topic. And I've got to be honest with you, um, that used to be me. In fact, when I was growing up, I would hear people say that the book of Revelation was a book to stay away from and not to read it or even turn to it. Weird, weird, right? And so there was this unhealthy fear about this book that's in the Bible. And it could have been a cultural thing, but quite frankly, I don't know where it came from, but it was convincing enough for me to stay away from it. Now, of course, after I accepted Christ and began to grow in the word, I became to realize that this was a faulty belief that was not based on anything biblical at all. It makes me wonder about the number of people who are walking around afraid of the book of Revelation and what they believe the end times is all about. So you have those who are on one end of the spectrum who tend to shy away from the topic of the end times. And then at the opposite end of the spectrum, you have those who are wearing a sandwich board on the weekends, handing out tracks to passing cars. Now, I'm not saying this is necessarily wrong, but I do wonder about the effectiveness of it when there are people who are non-believers being approached or addressed by those who are not afraid to boldly proclaim that Jesus is coming back. I believe we can meet in the middle and really explore this topic so that we all feel more comfortable about it. I guess the, the first question that we must address is whether we should fear death. Well, if you are a believer of Jesus Christ, you should absolutely not fear death. Um, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, um, verse 55, Oh, death, where is your sting? And of course, when believers die, we are instantaneously present with the Lord. And yes, I certainly do believe that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. You know, we think we have joy when we have that hot, delicious meal or, or we experience a long-awaited gift or opportunity but the joy that I'm referring to is a joy that's pure, a joy that's full, and a joy that is abundant. So we are in this secure place as it relates to eternity. But what about those who do not have that security? Our loved ones, our um, our neighbors, um, the, the young guy at the grocery store who takes your bags to your car or the daycare worker or the fast food cashier or, or anyone else who we may encounter on a daily or even a weekly basis. I told you that I recently preached a message about the end times and I looked at Matthew chapter 25 and the parable of the 10 versions and Matthew 25 rolls off of Matthew 24. Is, is there that the disciples come to Jesus and they privately ask him, what will be the sign of his return and the sign of the end of the age? And Jesus lets his disciples know that no one knows the day or the hour of his return. But this is what he says. He says that we can recognize the season of his return. And Jesus continues in verses 6 and 7 of chapter 24, and he says this to, us, to the disciples. You will hear of um, wars and rumors of wars, that a nation will rise against nation and kingdom 
against kingdom, and in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. I don't have to tell you that we're experiencing all these sorts of things today, right? You know, namely, you know, heat waves and fire fires and tropical storms, just to name a few. So we can really recognize the season of his return. But Jesus lets them know that no one knows the day and hour of his return, not even the angels of heaven, but only the Father alone. And so Jesus um, continues his dialogue with his disciples in Matthew chapter 25 with the first parable of that chapter, which is the parable of the 10 versions. And I love how Jesus um, often used parables throughout scripture to be able to um, make very difficult concepts um, easy. Um, And if you know the story, you recall that um, Jesus characterized five of the versions as foolish and five of them as wise. Now, five were foolish because they took no oil with them to light the way for the wedding processional. But the wise ones took lights with them and took oil with them. Well, if you fast forward to um, uh, throughout that parable, the foolish had no oil when the bridegroom finally came and they were sent off to buy oil. And when the bridegroom showed up, the wise versions were ready, is what the scripture says, and that they went into the wedding feast with them. But when the foolish ones returned, it was too late, and the door to the wedding feast was closed. Here's the thing. Those who we love and care about, um, who don't know Jesus, they risk being unprepared or not ready for the return of Jesus. And I guess what I'm saying is that it wouldn't it be a blessing if we loved the lost enough to intentionally remind them to be prepared. And if we model to them what being ready looks like, and if, um, if we made a commitment to, to consistently pray that they find their way before the door is shut. There's a woman um, who I know that I see uh, quite regularly, and she um, doesn't know Jesus. And um, my constant prayer is that she will be drawn to him and that um, her heart will be open to the gospel and that the door will not be short shut before she makes a decision to give her life to Christ. So here it is, as we are... Um, prayerfully connected to local churches, uh, may we be sanctified so that we are uh, prepared for God's presence. And may uh, we continue to share the gospel to a lost and dying world so that they too may enjoy God's presence now and forevermore. No, we don't know his return. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. But the charge to us is to um, continue doing the things that he's called us to do in the meantime and to continue to witness to others about the goodness of the Lord. Isn't that what we're called to do? You know, aren't we supposed to be able to let um, the world know about Jesus? And the thing about it is, you know, sometimes we say, well, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not called to uh, be a missionary overseas or whatever. And, and guess what? Our mission field is right next door. Our mission field is right down the street. Our mission field is, you know, across the street. We don't have to go far to be able to find those who don't know him. We just need to be aware of those who don't know him. And then we need to pray and ask the Lord, how does he want to use us? Um, How can we um, be instruments for his use to draw others to him? And so as we just think about uh, this whole topic, this whole area of just the end times and 
and and recognizing that those who know him will be raptured, will be taken up with him, that we don't want to leave anyone behind. We don't want those who um, that we love, that we care about, to have to experience um, what's to come after that period of time. So I just wanted to give you something to think about, to to pray about, and to hopefully charge you to be intentional about how we encounter those that we care about, that we love, especially during this season. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your love for us. As David proclaims, in your presence, there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Help those of us who know you to continue to grow closer to you. And may those who do not know you come to a complete knowledge of you very soon. Help us to be your arms and feet as we move about in this world that evidences the season of your return. And may the lost, especially our lost loved ones, our lost coworkers, our lost neighbors, and even our lost friends place their faith in you for the forgiveness of their sins. Father, we give you all praise and we give you all glory because we love you and we glorify you and we magnify your name. It's in the matchless name of Jesus that we do pray and amen. To all of our listeners, I'm Tuana Henderson. I look forward to connecting with you the next time. Be blessed of the Lord.